esencialmente estaremos discutiendo lo que sería el trasfondo histórico de las patentes o los inventos que están relacionados a software o a métodos de hacer negocios, con un enfoque mayormente, por razones obvias el tema, en el país de Estados Unidos, y específicamente cómo la Oficina de Patentes de los Estados Unidos y las Cortes, de alguna manera u otra, han, han definido eh, los parámetros de patentabilidad, en este caso específico, para invenciones que sean de software. Lo que esperamos al finalizar este conversatorio es que tengamos una idea cómo la patentabilidad del software implementada ¿no? a través de las reivindicaciones ha cambiado ¿no? y cómo esto ha sido así previo a la opinión de Alice y, y posterior ¿no? a la decisión de Alice y cómo se han actuado las autoridades pertinentes al respecto. Pero más importante aún son las enseñanzas y los consejos prácticos que esperemos que ustedes se lleven durante el día de hoy y que puedan llevarlo de esa manera a aquellos clientes, a aquellos innovadores que deseen proteger su software en Estados Unidos y que pueda de alguna manera tener un atemperamiento entre la práctica local y la práctica de Estados Unidos. So this is a, uh, obviously a very interesting topic and also a very thorny and sensitive topic, uh, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Um, the name Alice, by the way, if I may ask, is there anybody here named Alice? I cannot see because of the lights, um, and um, we don't mean any harm to the name Alice. <laughs> I think and, we're uh, safe, we're good to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's amazing by happenstance that Alice happened to be the party to this lawsuit, and so Alan and I were talking, we didn't want to offend anybody if we happened to say anything negative about Alan. 1982 is a very important year in the United States for IP attorneys because that's the year that the Federal Circuit was created. The reason why the Federal Circuit was created was because prior to the Federal Circuit, all uh, appeals from district courts went to its relevant circuit courts. It's amazing how much Latin America is immersed in software. So therefore, we really need, we really need to think about how in Latin America we, we incentivize our young, old, middle, whatever, to, to really innovate and When you innovate, that's intellectual property you're building, and you need to protect that. And we need to know how to protect that. In this particular case, the court said that for an element to be well understood, routine, and conventional, which is the language that appears in Alice, this is what the Supreme Court said should not be patentable. The court said, in this case, this is not a test for whether something is in the prior art. In the prior art means you simply have one patent that shows what you're claiming. But in this particular case, you had to show, the examiner had to show, it was beyond simply one disclosure. It had to be well-known, understood, routine, and conventional. The next case is the visual memory case. And this is a case that showed if you had an improved technology, not just the improved performance of the computer, you also can use that as a hook to get an app in the United States.